Thank you for choosing the med sled evacuation sleds as your preferred emergency evacuation device. When timing is critical, the med sled evacuation sled enables your staff to safely transport a person two to three times their weight over debris out of a single story or down stairwells of a multi-floor building without ever lifting the patient. The objective of this training video is threefold. The first objective is to provide an overview of the evacuation sled so staff can have a basic understanding of the sled features. Secondly, we will demonstrate the use of the evacuation sled. And lastly, we will demonstrate how to properly put the sled away in what we call an evacuation ready state. It is important to understand that our evacuation sleds are available in three sizes. We offer a youth sled, a standard sled, and a bariatric sled. Prior to reviewing the differences of our three sleds, let's take a moment to review the standard features of our evacuation sleds. Our med sleds are made of high density polyethylene plastic. The key qualities of this plastic include flexibility, allowing the sled to be rolled up for storage while still providing its rigidity when deployed. High density polyethylene plastic also makes the sled very slick allowing it to easily drag over all surfaces. All of our sleds are decon capable. The med sleds come with everything you need to safely evacuate your patient from bed to floor, down the hall, and down the stairs to safety without ever having to lift them. Our evacuation sleds provide backboard-like rigidity and have been designed to hold up to 1,000 pounds. Each sled comes with its own stairwell braking system allowing for a safe and controlled descent. The sled includes three securing cross straps and a foot loop strap. The foot loop strap provides extra support at the bottom of the sled and can be used to secure equipment if needed. Lastly, our patented perimeter tether provides patient stabilization and can be used for lifting. Lifting will only be required if the situation dictates that you do so. Next, we will review the differences between our three evacuation sleds and when you should use which sled. The med sled youth sled is a shorter and narrower sled. When deployed, the youth sled measures 65 inches long and 28 inches wide. This sled is ideal for a pediatric unit that provides specialized care for a younger and smaller patient population. The youth sled is designed to handle those patients between 32 and 60 inches tall. Our standard med sled evacuation sled is designed to address the needs of 80% of your adolescent and adult patient population. When deployed, the standard sled measures 78 inches long and 36 inches wide. Depending on the girth of your patient, this sled will fit most patients up to 350 pounds. Lastly, our bariatric med sled is designed to handle your largest patients. It is not a question of the patient's weight, but rather their girth. For those larger patients, our bariatric sled provides an additional 12 inches of width. The bariatric sled is designed to handle your largest bariatric patients, but is also ideal for your sickest ICU, PACU, and post-op patients that may need to be transported with additional padding and or life support equipment. We are now ready to demonstrate the use of the med sled. As mentioned earlier, all three med sled evacuation sleds work identically. For the demonstration portion of this training, we will be using the standard med sled. We recommend that clinicians take the primary role for the deployment and loading of the patients as they have the best understanding of their health issues. Once the sled has been removed from the bag, unfasten and release the orange cinch strap and secure under the perimeter tether. Place sled on the ground and unroll. After unrolling the sled, pinch the sides inward holding in place for two to three seconds. The sled is now fully deployed and ready for patient loading. As a reminder, there are three cross straps and a foot loop strap at the foot of the sled. The foot end also includes two black pull straps. At the head end is the vertical descent braking system which connects to the perimeter tether. The perimeter tether runs along the side of the sled and can be used as handles for sliding and lifting the sled. The next phase of the evacuation is a three-step process, which includes patient loading, transporting the patient from bed to floor, and vertically descending down the stairs to the extraction point. The first step of this process is loading the patient in the sled. To maximize comfort, wrap the patient in the bed linens. 
Once wrapped, raise the bed rail on one side of the patient bed. Utilizing the patient roll and pull technique, move the patient onto the med sled. As always, prior to moving the patient, take note of their medical concerns. If a backboard or additional padding is needed, do so prior to moving the patient. Once loaded on the med sled, adjust the patient so they are positioned at the bottom with their feet against the foot pad and centered on the sled. Lower the bed rail at this time. Next, align the foot loop strap between the patient's feet. Add any equipment or supplies that need to be moved with the patient. For example, an oxygen tank would be situated between the patient's legs with the valve facing up. An IV bag would be placed between the arm and body of the patient or above their shoulders. You are now ready to secure the patient into the sled. Starting at the foot end, detach the buckles, pulling the straps under the person. Then fasten the buckles. To prevent the cross straps from slipping, place your thumb on the cross strap against the sled while tightening to comfort. Repeat this process for the remaining cross straps. However, before tightening the top strap, position the patient's hands along their side and fold it at the belt buckle. Do not use straps near the throat or head. If the top strap is too close to the patient's neck, you can simply crisscross the top and middle straps. Finally, secure all strap ends inside of the sled. The patient is now ready to be lowered to the floor. Prior to moving the patient off the bed, ensure that the bed wheels are locked. Position the foot end of the sled toward the nearest exit. If this requires you to move the footboard, do so. Using the perimeter tether handles on both sides of the sled, slide the patient, allowing gravity to lower the foot end of the sled to the ground. Once the foot end has reached the floor, gently lower the head end. The patient is now ready to be pulled to the protocol stairwell exit for vertical descent down the stairs. Proper body mechanics are critical. Stand straight up, leaning away from the patient. Extend your arms fully and communicate with your partner so you are pulling together. Lastly, always face the direction in which you are pulling. The ideal position of the patient in the stairwell is along the outer wall of the stairwell. This typically will give you the best connection point for the carabiner and make the transition on each landing easier. Once the sender has properly positioned the patient, they will disengage the stairwell braking system located at the head end of the sled and connect the carabiner to the highest anchor point at the top of the stairs. Once the carabiner has been connected, remove the slack in the orange braking tether. To initiate the vertical descent, the receiver should position themselves on the side of the sled, staggering their feet for balance. Once the receiver has communicated to the sender, the receiver will slowly pull the sled off the landing, lowering it onto the stairs while the sender maintains tension by pulling back on the braking tether. Once the receiver has moved to the landing, the sender can slowly lower the sled. Once the patient is on the landing, the sender should remove the carabiner and walk it down to the next landing while pulling the tether back through the carabiner so it is ready for the next descent. This process repeats itself on each landing. Connect the carabiner to the next anchor point. As the receiver pulls the sled off the landing, the sender always maintains tension in the braking tether. The sender can use a hand-over-hand -hand motion for lowering the patient down the stairs to the next landing. Once the patient is secure on the landing, the sender disconnects the carabiner while the receiver repositions the patient on the outer wall for the next descent. The last step of the process is to put the med sled away properly, so it is always in an evacuation-ready state. Prior to put away, use decon wipes to ensure your sled is free of dirt and debris. Once the sled has been properly cleaned, roll up the braking tether and place the tether inside the carabiner and secure both at the head of the sled using the orange Velcro cinch strap to hold in place. Be sure that the carabiner and tether are both secured underneath the cinch strap. Buckle all three cross straps and loosen so the sled can lay flat against the floor. The next step is roll up. Place the cinch strap tether under the sled with Velcro facing the floor. 
place both black drag straps inside the sled. Starting at the foot end, roll the sled as tightly as possible. As you roll, maintain downward pressure on the roll at all times. Once rolled up, place one knee on the roll and loop the cinch strap through the black slide and Velcro closed. The last step is to put the sled back in the storage bag. If you maintained a tight roll, it should be between 9 and 10 inches in diameter and will easily fit in the storage bag. If not, do not force. You may have to unroll and try again. Once in the bag, return the sled to its proper storage location so the sled is always evacuation ready.